Um, we also have a question if you have to render the entire model uh, or can you render separate subtools. Um, so absolutely, you can uh, go back to ZBrush and maybe um, you know hide some of those other subtools and um, show how much faster those individual parts will transfer over. Yep, let's pick something. Let's pick just these little. Uh, well, let's pick something a little cooler. There we go. We'll pick these ju just these little uh, these little laser mounts here that were on my ship. Okay, so now we have this solo, just this subtool. Just go to your the same thing. We're already activated in Keyshot, right? And then uh, we have this set. So just simple uh, press Shift R or the VPR tab, and you can see it went so much faster on this one. So you can see how fast that was. So it, super fast. You can pick any subtool you want, or you can even pick multiple subtools. So if you want to have a couple of them visible. Having some problems with this model here. It's not cooperating today. Why am I not able to get to? Forgive me, it's a slow morning here. Okay. So now we want to have just the same subtool. So if, if you're tweaking just this one subtool and you want to keep changing and tweaking and editing just this one, it's the same process. Press the VPR and you can see, boom, there it is in, in Keyshot that fast. So that's the way to get individual subtools and um, make your transfer also faster. So if you just want to see just this one part of the model and you want to see the materiality of it, see how your different, you know, how your spec looks with different materials on it, just this one piece. This is a great fast way to do it on just one subtool. Does that answer that? Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Great. Yep. Looks like you had solo still turned on. That's why uh, I couldn't. Uh, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. I need my coffee this morning, guys. Sorry. Uh, do you have any examples of models with any textures, uh, UV map models? Uh, um, no, or none that I can show legally. Most of my yeah. stuff, is, most of my models are copyrighted um, uh, because they're they're for films or games or something like that. Uh, most of most of my concept work in ZBrush, I don't do a lot of texturing on it. Um, it's just simple, quick models, and I do most of the painting in Photoshop because this, that's a faster method for me. And I typically don't need that level of detail for my concept models. My models I do for production and map painting, uh, sadly, I'm not allowed to show those. But those are fully textured, et cetera, and that workflow is very smooth. Sadly, this morning, I don't have a good example of that to show you guys. Hey, Nick. Yes, sir. Just one question on what you do in Keyshot before you go to Photoshop. Can you talk a little bit about that and show what you do in, in Keyshot? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Okay, so um, typically let's let's kick this whole model back in there so we can see the whole thing again. Just let me press the VPR button as it processes. Okay, let's, so let's say um, this is uh, going to be the final model, and uh, I'm not going to go back and forth into ZBrush anymore. I have pretty much everything set up just like I want it. I know that model's fine. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to start my painting or continue my painting depending if I've already started it. Okay, so typically what I'll do is I'll, the first thing I like to do is I like to find a good angle for this. So let's say I go to my camera here, go to your camera tab. I'll make, click on this plus button here, add a camera, right? You can call it, you know, under, so I'm looking under the ship so you know what it is, right? You want to be organized. So I just pick a good frame that I think looks cool for under the ship. Okay, so then... You have your camera, something like you want, okay? So you want to lock your camera because if you start rendering from this camera and you move it, well, the renders aren't going to line up anymore, right? So first thing I do, find the angle that you like, then find, get your camera and then toggle the lock on your camera, right? So then now I can't move the camera. It's always locked. That's step one for me. Step two would be finding your materials for this. So in this case, we're just going to put on some different... Um, Let's pick some good materials here, something really quick, plastic, 
Exalta. Why not? I like this red. It's really cool. Okay, so then uh, I, I start applying my materials in Keyshot. This, we're just going to do this kind of randomly here. Okay, so let's say I've applied a few materials. I've applied some different ones to different objects like that. This is a great thing, just being able to drag your material onto the subtool and it just places it. It's awesome. Because it can allow you to very quickly experiment with different materials on different subtools super fast. Drag, boom, okay? So let's say I've done all my, my material work. I'm happy with the materials. Okay, now the next thing that I would do is I would pick my environment. So Keyshot comes with some really cool uh, pre-made environments you can use. There's the, the whole studio tab here, right, that has a ton of stuff in it, the outdoor tab, and then your interior tab. Also, feel free to go online and get this ton of free HDRs online you can use and simply import them in your environment setup right here. So I'll show both methods. So what I'll, what I'll do for this example is say I want to have this be outdoors, right, because it's a ship. It would be kind of weird flying around inside unless it's a massive environment. Okay, so then first thing I do, I get a cool environment that kind of looks like what I want. And then you, I rotate my HDRI dome uh, to try and find a good lighting scenario. So you can see as I rotate, you know, I get interactive uh, specularity and reflection, which is amazing. So you can rotate your dome, get the exact right position you want for the sun, right? And see for this, you want the sun to be just behind this, this piece so it blooms. So there's our light source for the most part. So I'll jack up the value, get the contrast really hot. And then, so let's say this is the first render, so I'll render this out, you know, go to my render options or command P on the Mac, I assume control P on PC, I don't know, um, and I'll render a first version of this. And typically what I do, or I've done in the past, is I don't stop with just one render, I get multiple renders. Um, that way you can combine them in Photoshop, paint a little bit here, paint a little bit there. One thing I've been doing recently is I'll get... Um, I'll make my own specular passes by just combining different materials and um, render out, just make this whole ship black, and then I can uh, combine different materials on it that way by picking different domes and different lighting scenarios. So let's say here's our first lighting setup. I love this dome. Okay, boom, I've got my renders out of this. So now let's say I want to get a little different lighting setup, maybe try something different. Simply go to your, um, your uh, environments tab and then just pick on a different environment that comes set with it. Just so you can see already the massive lighting difference in the previous version and this version just by simply picking the different HDRI maps. You see it's a total different environment, total different ship. So I do a lot of experimenting with different lighting setups. Finding a cool lighting, finding what materials work best with the lighting. So yeah, you can see here this looks totally different. You get these cool big spec hits right here and reflections from the light up here. So that's a really cool feature, and you see how fast it is. And so interactively, as I rotate uh, right here with your rotate setting, as I rotate my HDRI dome, you can see that I get a tremendous variety of lighting setups so fast. So that's a very, very great feature, and it's a cool way to make your concept art have a lot of different variety in it. So that's basically the way that I get my lighting and my variables set up. So let's say we have two or three of these rendered out. Then I would go into Photoshop and composite them in and kind of paint in parts that I like. Say if from this pass in particular, I really like these highlights here that are, that are sitting on this curve piece, well, I'll just paint that in for just this pass in Photoshop. The beauty of that is the renders are so fast, and to get the look like you just saw, it's so fast. You just throw in the HDRI dome, rotate it, change your height, change your size, change your contrast, and very, very quickly you can get an entirely new looking ship. So that's a great, great feature and something that I'm still, still experimenting with, but it's got a lot of power for sure. Awesome. Um, okay, well, I think we're getting close to the end here. Is there anything else you wanted to add before we wrap things up, Nick? Um, I think that kind of covers it for me. I think. Uh, the main thing is just be creative and fun and use this software for what it is. It's a powerful renderer and it's so easy to use, so fast, and it has so many options you can, you can combine them and tweak them endlessly. So if you want to have a fully detailed model and textured in ZBrush, that's great, and then bring it in and render it. Or if you want to just have a non-textured model in ZBrush and do your materials 
and rendering in Keyshot and then do your texture painting in Photoshop, that's also a great workflow. It really depends on your desired output, how much time you have, and if this needs to be final in 3D or just final in 2D as a concept image. All right, cool. Um, so one last thing I wanted to add. You were mentioning there are a ton of uh, free downloads for HDRIs online. Um, also available with uh, Keyshot for ZBrush, uh, if we go to take a look at some of the, the new features of 4R7 and go to the ZBrush to Keyshot page, uh, we can scroll down to the bottom here and see that there's actually a free download pack uh, for um, several different resources that are very high quality uh, produced between Pixelogic and Luxion. Um, so a ton of backplates, uh, 22 HDRI images, and some clay style materials. Um, so you can just download, download those for free uh, and enjoy that content inside of Keyshot as well. Um, all right, Josh, uh, anything else before we wrap things up? Nope, nothing for me. Uh, be sure to check out the, the webinar after this. Uh, we'll get it up on YouTube, and you can access it on the Keyshot site uh, website as well. Yep, so youtube.com slash Keyshot3D. A recording of this webinar will be available in the next few days, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, we cannot wait to see what you guys at home are creating uh, with this new integration. Uh, so see you next time. Bye. Thanks, everybody.